So if you were considering buying an Intel Arc A770 or A750 GPU as an NVIDIA 3060 competitor or an AMD 6600 X T competitor, I believe 6600, whatever, it doesn't matter. It says on the box that it was required to have an Intel 10th gen CPU or newer or select AMD 3000 CPUs or newer to be able to run Arc. Today we're gonna talk about why, that way if you're considering buying one, you don't make a potential huge mistake for your system. Get your next gaming PC from Build Redux. Compare pricing to buying the parts yourself and stop overpaying. Pick your starting budget, see your estimated gaming performance, and then see your PC based on your choices. Plus, Redux offers a growing support hub to answer all your questions. And it's backed by a two-year parts and labor warranty, so you're covered. Pick your budget, pick your games, and get Build Redux. So one of the compelling selling points of Arc is its price point, especially when it's coming to market at starting at $329 uh, for the A770. So that's a, that's a really compelling price point for a lot of people that are on a budget. And a lot of people on a budget aren't necessarily gonna be running the latest generation CPUs. Oftentimes they're gonna try and stretch their platform out as far as they can. Now the main reason why you're going to have to run a newer CPU is the fact that Intel has been very open and transparent with the fact that their GPUs pretty much require a resizable bar for Intel platform or a smart access memory for an AMD platform. When 5000 series AMD CPU launched, uh, it launched along with it a PCI Express feature called Smart Access Memory. And what that basically does is it, it opens up and widens the bandwidth between the memory in the GPU and the CPU to have faster, larger data transfer with the GPU. So if you don't have it enabled, then what happens is you end up sending a lot of small chunks of data to the GPU at a time. In fact, Intel Arc's memory controller is actually very sensitive to this type of transfer. In fact, that Tom A. Peterson had this to say. And then the second question that I think most people want to know is, we've been very open about Turn it in on. Intel Arc architecture is more Turn sensitive <laughs> to resizable bar. Turn it on. So it's just one of those design, I guess, implementations of their memory controller that makes Intel Arc benefit heavily from having large data sets uh, of, of information set to the memory controller on the graphics card that's only achievable by enabling smart access memory or um, resizable bar. They're basically the same thing. He calls it rebar because, you know, we like to shorten things, I guess, in the industry. Uh, but Tom calls it rebar. So I saw in my in the comment section of my ARC uh, unboxing video and even on Twitter, a lot of folks, when I said it was interesting that 10th gen was required, uh, it didn't even dawn on me that 10th gen was as far back as Intel's resizable bar uh, and PCI Express functionality on their supported motherboards goes back. I, I don't know why I thought 9th gen was gonna be a resizable bar option, but it's not. Um, also too, you're gonna have to be running Windows 10 20H2 update or newer because that's where the resizable bar option also happens at, uh, for the OS. So this actually makes it kind of difficult for some people to update because of the fact that these are very compelling entry-level mid-range graphics cards that are gonna be great up to 1440p, at least based on their charts, and you'll see when the embargoes lift on performance how they perform. I think a lot of folks were hoping to take this graphics card and plug it into an older system. I saw some comments of folks saying, I, have, I see no reason to update my AMD 2700X. I just wanna throw an arc in there and start gaming. Well, you're not gonna be able to have a good experience if you do that because 2000 series AMD CPUs do not have smart access memory. Same thing with 9th gen 9900Ks, still very popular um, CPUs. In fact, Phil's still on one. Um, if he wanted to run an Arc GPU, he would be highly recommended not to. It's funny because they call it a quote unquote requirement, but the language on their website actually says it's required to have a, um, like a reasonable experience because it will run it will turn on and it will give you an image and it will game. But not having resizable bar or smart access memory enabled gives you basically uh, an overall little bit lower average. But the problem here is when it starts to load in data in open world games or any game that has large data sets that have to get sent to the GPU's memory, um, happens in all those small little chunks of memory rather than giant amount of data at one time. And what you're gonna see is massive spikes in frame latency and frame pacing. And so without having that enabled, it's just gonna be a terrible gaming experience. And for anyone that is actually considering buying an Intel Arc GPU and you have this access, a smart access memory or a resizable bar function on your motherboard, you need to check because they're not all on by default. 
Uh, my ASUS motherboard on 12th gen that we're using on our test bench did have it on by default. And that's why actually when going back and doing a lot of testing, we're seeing a little bit of uplift across the board on our GPUs because of the fact that every GPU benefits from this. And Intel's also been very open with like, hey, NVIDIA and AMD, their GPUs do also benefit from smart access memory and resizable bar being turned on. But the Arc series GPUs take a much bigger hit by not having it turned on than AMD and NVIDIA. So they're a little bit more established across the board on how their memory controllers are handling the data sets based on the platform that they're on. Um, the other thing too is your motherboard obviously is gonna have to have a full size 16X PCIe 3.0, which is funny because the 3.0 spec actually goes back farther technically than resizable bar. Um, but that's when the select 3000 series CPUs with resizable bar uh, come in because AMD did offer a backwards BIOS update for a lot of the motherboards that were able to support forward series. Remember it's that whole part of the AM4 thing of support, being supported for five years? They had to make that decision on which CPUs on like X370 were gonna be supported forward up to 5000 series CPUs. So you need to check with your BIOS manufacturer and see if it includes resizable bar if you're on a 3000 series processor. If you're on a 3000 series G series processor, 3200G, 3400G, it's not gonna be there, period. Um, so that's the unfortunate thing. And this is what happens when we have brand new technologies that were kind of making their way in over time, now becoming the standard and the necessity. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we saw that pretty much all manufacturers of GPUs, Nvidia, AMD, and Intel with next gens requiring some sort of smart access memory or rebar. I also wouldn't be surprised if the CPU slash motherboard manufacturers and the PCI Express um, standards also didn't just have it on by default as a just, it's an always on function. Um, but even if you're not looking at buying Intel Arc, this is a discussion that's been taking place now for two years regarding rebar and you should check it on your system. You should go into your system, see if it's there, and enable it. It's not gonna hurt your system in any way, and it's actually gonna give you a better gaming experience overall in terms of frame pacing, frame latency, um, and milliseconds between frame draws. It's only gonna give you a better gaming experience, whether you can use Intel Arc or not. But I thought this was some important information to get out there. I'm sure that uh, other publications have been talking about it, um, but I, even over the weekend, was reading a lot of comments about uh, Intel's Arc, and a lot, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. When it comes to the CPU side of things, like Intel's kind of looked at like a villain, kind of like Nvidia. They're kind of looked at like Nvidia when it comes to the CPU side of stuff, you know, and AMD is the hero there. But when it comes to GPUs, everyone's like, is this gonna be our, our dark knight? Is this, the, is this the hero we deserve, but not the one we need? Because it's like, it's, now it's like Two-Face, right? You got the CPU side, which is the ugly one, and then you've got the Harvey Dent side, which is you know the awesome guy that's gonna clean up the GPU town on the other side, and he's flipping a coin on which one you're gonna get. I mean, it's kind of awesome in a way, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just weird. I mean, they are com two completely different divisions and philosophies of, of Intel, which is, which is interesting. But yeah, turn it on, like Tom A. Peterson said. Turn it yeah. on. All right, kind of a short one here, but some important information to put out there. I, I'm trying to, to head off on the review, and we'll be talking about this in the review again, short, like in a short, uh, condensed version of it, if you're looking at buying an Intel Arc. And, th and this, was, this was actually made very apparent on the A380 as well. The problem is not many people really bought the A380 because it was like a GT, like a GTX 1030 equivalent. It just nobody was really buying the game on it. Now that these are actual gaming competitors at 1080p and 1440p, I saw a lot of comments this weekend of folks that were looking at buying it. So I'm really hoping you guys have rebar access and, and functionality on your motherboards. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Are you gonna buy it? Are you gonna adopt it on day one and just hope? We all hope that this brings some, some real damage to the bottom line at the very meat of where the buyers are, which is this $350 to $279 price point. Please, be the good side of Harvey Dent. But I thought this was some... <laughs>